Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me again today, he was kind enough to come back on the podcast. He's an NCAA All-American. He's becoming our next American superstar in backstroke, I am, butterfly, you name it. He's he's gone best times in it in the, in the recent in the recent past. We've got Shane Casas. How's it going, Shane? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Um, glad to be back. Thank you for bringing me on here again. So tell me about the records in your in in the background. <laughs> when when did you hang those up and adorn your room in these? Uh, I'm pretty sure these were all like freshman sophomore year. I mean, there's a lot missing, but I think <laughs> a good chunk of them. Yeah, there's even some right here on this wall, and I guess I'm gonna pull that side too. I've just broken so many. <laughs> well, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a great decoration. I love it. Um, it, I mean, do you, does ha, just having those hung up on your wall, what does that mean to you? Uh, I mean, I kind of walk in, I just see like, sometimes I'll be just be like, uh, just watching YouTube and I'll be like, oh, damn, yeah, I remember doing that. Okay, that's cool. That's nice. All right, let's see what, uh, which ones I can get next. Stuff like that. I mean, it's never like anything too crazy or anything deep like that. It's just, I think it's a cool decoration versus just like pictures or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it is, okay. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, so I, I, I want to talk to you about this fall, your summer last, I talked to you a while ago, but um, mm -hmm. let's start with June when you actually got COVID. Yeah. So, I mean, June, I think it was either, it was either like end of May or early June when mm -hmm a good chunk of us all got COVID and I remember we were just hanging out one day and then all of a sudden we get a call and it's like someone so just tested positive like you need to like go to your house and like quarantine and I was like damn okay I really hope I didn't get it because I've been around them this whole time and then sure enough I uh, like one or two days later I'm feeling weird like pretty funky and then I we all go and get our test and of course my comes back positive and I'm like damn okay so then it was just two weeks of just like video games, just sitting around doing nothing. I started to lose my mind because I was like, damn, I really want to swim or work out. But I was like, damn, I'm getting fat and all this stuff. So it was, it was, I don't know, it was, it was cool to chill for a little bit, but it was not cool to be like feeling sick and just sitting around all day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, on a, on a scale of like one to 10, how, you know how s sick or bad were you feeling during that period i mean lucky for me i was like pretty much asymptomatic like i had i think like maybe one symptom but my like upstairs roommate luke w had it really bad and ethan also got it pretty bad too um i mean a lot of us didn't really get it because i mean i guess we're just like you know like healthy males we're just young and stuff like that fortunate mm -hmm. but i know it can be serious for a lot of people that's why there's been so much stuff with it all going on right now. Yeah. So, so you were fairly asymptomatic. You said you felt a little funky. Um, had I, I, I don't recall, had you taken significant time out of the water before that? Yeah. I mean, with the lockdown up until that point, like we didn't really have pool time. Like I know after a certain point though, I went back. I mean, from the last podcast, I was swimming with Vegas or Mark Theo in mm -hmm. Houston. And we were training then. And then after we came back for a little bit, we were training. We all got COVID. So we had to take time off again. And then we started up again. So that's kind of how it went. And it was super rough because it was like, all right, you're already super out of shape from like months not being in the pool. And then I got COVID. And I'm like, holy, sh I'm like, damn, okay, I'm really tired and all this stuff. But finally, I feel like I've kind of gotten it back. <laughs> it certainly seems like it. And so, so you two weeks off you're in the covid lockdown did you exercise at all during that two weeks yeah yeah i mean i was doing like push-ups and stuff like that just like basic okay. just like whatever i could do 
Mm, okay. Gotcha. So, I mean, you're staying active and then, you know, getting back in the pool for you, what, what was that process like? It was definitely, I really think it was harder than the first time just cause like, I mean, they had a lot, they had like restrictions. Cause like if you had COVID like that, you were at like 50% for like a week, stuff like that. Cause I remember like after, um, a good chunk of training after the first shutdown, we put on suits and stuff like that. And I went like 143, 2am or 142. And like, um, just, I don't know, like, all right. Times for like where I was at, like prior, like, you know, like SECs and I was going like much faster. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, like we got a lot of work to do, but I feel pretty good. And then we came back and I'm like super slow. I'm like, I, I couldn't even tell you times. I don't want to embarrass myself, but I just could not get going. So it took me a while, but I feel like I finally like reached like my peak again. And I'm like doing what I know I can do. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that's frustrating, especially, you know, it seemed like you had a really good groove going at, at it, SECs heading into NCs earlier this year. And then, you know, all these, uh, you know, multiple setbacks. Um, what, how, how long do you feel like it took you to kind of get back to, to where you felt good about training? Um, I'd say I was back, back probably that first meet when it was us, Texas and um, SMU. And then I went one thirty six. I felt pretty good there. Um, I felt like this invite, I kind of got shafted a little bit because I like rolled my ankle and it was like, kind of messed up and all that stuff. So I didn't really get to do what I wanted to do past the first day. So that's just something that I have to wait to do at like SECs or, I mean, hopefully NCAAs is still a thing. All these meets, like hopefully all these meets are still a thing because we just don't know, like with all like the the rules and everything, but hopefully like I actually get like my true shot again. It's pretty annoying. So I'm just trying to wait and be patient with it. Definitely. So, I mean, let's, let's go through these meets. The, that first meet, um, it's you, it's A&M, it's Texas, it's SMU. Um, you said you felt pretty good there. Tell me about what you were expecting out of the races um, at that meet. Since, I mean, what, what, what was that, like October, I think? So, I mean, this is like from like um, February to October, like this whole like giant window where it's like unknown, like I don't know what I can do and stuff like that. And this is also like, you know, cause I remember it was so crazy. Cause after the lockdowns, like people started swimming again and then everybody started going best times. And I'm like, okay, like people aren't training but they're still going faster than ever. So I'm like, okay, let's see what I can do. And luckily I, it was pretty good. Like, I don't know. I just thought that was super weird. Cause me and my friends, we had like really long conversations. We were like, damn, like maybe swimming isn't like what we like. Maybe it's not like, oh, you need to kill yourself for like nine months and then taper and then you're good. Maybe it's like, you don't need that much. and I think this season so far has proved that. I mean, I've had conversations with Jason and Jay about it. Like maybe it's just time to change like that whole quarantine and stuff really like force people to adapt with everything, which is cool. I like it. I mean, I don't, if I don't want to swim as much, I'm, I'm, I'm down. That is awesome. <laughs> I, I agree. I think it, I've talked to a lot of people about it. We've had conversations. I feel like that's where kind of swimming is heading anyway even before lockdown you know there there was kind of a movement from less traditional training to more like racing as training but anyway yeah, I mean, for like isl you know like the, i felt like that's kind of what it was like, showed people you know absolutely and so so what do you feel like you i mean were you just doing the that normal kind of training or what do you feel like really helped you get into that place where you were going those best times um, throughout throughout all this uncertain training? Uh, I mean, I've done a lot of like outside of the pool stuff, you know, like for a while I was always in our like training room, like doing recovery and flexibility stuff and mobility to like get better outside of the pool so I didn't have to do so much in the pool. And I feel like that really helped because like, I mean, I've had some pretty bad ankle injuries and I felt like I finally got my ankles back to like 100%. And my shoulders are feeling good again, stuff like that. So I think that's really what helped me. And I mean, like diet, stuff like that. I lost a lot of fat and stuff. So I think it's a lot of everything. And then just, I mean, I guess smarter swimming has made me like take another step forward in swimming. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about smarter swimming. What do you, what do you do smarter during practice? 
Uh, I mean, it's not nothing crazy, you know. I mean, Jason got us like these Trident wear thingies that we put in our caps, and it kind of like tells you like your your like velocity off walls, your kicks and stuff like that. And it kind of like it learns like who you are and like how you do things, and you can kind of like use that and like get better and be like, oh, this practice like I wasn't as consistent off the walls or underwater and stuff like that, or oh, this practice like I did really well. Like, what did I do today that made me that much better than yesterday when I wasn't doing well? So there's that. And then like, I mean, Jason and Jay have been like, kind of like trying new things, you know, faster intervals, stuff like that. Like, it's just a bunch of little variables that they're tweaking to maximize performance. And that's what I mean by like faster swimming and smarter swimming. Yeah. <clears throat> Would, do, you, do you have certain focuses you know, just on a day-to-day -day basis in practice that, that you personally, that's what you're working on, say like breakouts or underwaters or technique. Um, do you wow. have those things? Well, I mean, since I'm an IMR, I kind of have to like get everything in. And sometimes I feel like I don't have enough time, you know, cause I want to be able to do the 50, but I also want to be able to do like the 500 and the 4am and the 2am. So I'm just like, just like trying to do everything I can. So I don't know. I just, I just focus on everything that I possibly can. And take it day by day because i mean i have like i am monday and tuesday and then it's like power wednesday friday and then thursday is like power saturday's speed i don't know there's a lot of different things that i do yeah uh okay so sorry it's getting getting back to the that first meet you went 136 i think you went 44 4 in the 100 back yeah. um i mean those you know 136 that was like one of the fastest tuner backs of all time. And you said that was pretty good. What, what made it pretty good for you? I think the circumstances I was in, I mean, I've been going through a lot and to be able to throw down a time like that was pretty good for me. I, I definitely expected more. That's why I was like, okay, that's pretty good. Like, I feel like I trained and raced at a high enough level to get near the top times or top the top times. Mm-hmm. And then you also, do you remember what, I, I remember you went 337 in the 400 IM? Uh, I mean, when I, I raced Carson, I went 38, but previously in um, January, I believe, or early February, I went 337. Okay. So you were, so you were 38 at that meet in the 4 IM and then one, do you remember what you were in the 2 IM? Okay. And how'd you, how'd you feel about those? Uh, those are definitely like the shakier of the races just because like, I don't know, there's just been a lot going on with like, I am like, I wasn't really like firing yet with brushstroke and freestyle, like my butterfly and backstroke were good, but brushstroke and freestyle had a lot of work to do up to that point. And I thought, I mean, it was a great race. I love racing Carson. Like he definitely brought out, like, I know I brought out the best in him and I, he brought out the best in me in that moment. And that was, that was sick to race him. And I mean, he beat my butt. So that was they gave me extra motivation. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, I mean that those races are tough. <laughs> they really hurt. And I'm just like, okay, let's, let's keep going. <laughs> and did you think that he was going to pull a race out like that? I mean, cause I mean, him I going knew, three, I knew, I knew one of us was going crazy fast and it happened to be him that day. So that was really good for him. Yeah. That, I mean, that was, that was a cool one to watch. I was in the building for that one. It was just, I, I knew I'd heard rumblings. He was going for the nag record, but uh -huh. which, which I don't remember. Uh -huh. That was crazy. I'm pretty sure the nag was 37. So he like completely just, yeah. <laughs> like a couple seconds. He's like, you know what? Let's go number two all time. Yeah. I like, I, re yeah, <laughs> I remember it was just like, okay, he's, he like didn't just break it. He like destroyed it. Uh, yeah. but that it was, <laughs> it's a cool race yeah I was um, like, what? like it, it got to the brushstroke and i'm like dude this kid <laughs> no way and then freestyle came and i'm like dude, i can't catch this guy like this guy to not get beat so bad so that kind of brings up an interesting point you know you you said those races really hurt they're really hard what have you learned since being an a&m maybe just the last you know 12 18 months um what have you learned about just how to race and how to really maximize what you're doing during a race um because i'm guessing from from high school to college you know it's like you thought trying was one thing and then and then you get to the you get to another level and it's like oh trying in a race is like a whole nother thing yeah i'll never forget like i don't know just the jump from high school to uh, the collegiate level is insane like i remember 
from state my senior year to my first dual meet or travel meet, we were gonna we went against Ohio State and Louisville. And my best time at the, at this point was like like a 44 mid hunter freestyle. And Jason comes up to me, he's like, You're leading off the relay. We need we need to go best time. And I'm like, I look down, I'm in a speed, I'm like, no way, dude. Like, how is this possible? Like, you expect me to just jump up to there like that? And I mean, I went like 44 eight or something, which was like pretty good, I guess. And I was like, damn, like everything I knew from high school just went out the window. Nothing's impressive anymore. Not none of that. Like there's a whole nother league for this, which was super cool. Cause I think I really like excelled with that like mindset and the pressure to perform with being in college. I think it's like, it's, it's cool. Cause I mean, it's like the best level you can get basically. Yeah. And I mean, you, so you excel in that pressure. Is there, was there a learning curve for that? I mean, how, how did you, how did you start leveling up yourself? Was it just, you know, training or at meets where do you do certain things to kind of get yourself in that place? I mean, I, even to this day, I'm still learning like what to do, how to get faster, how to perform better on demand, stuff like that. Cause that's always been a big focus that Jason and Jay have made. Like that's a big point to be able to show up on race day. Cause that's, that's who the winner is the guy that can show up and win it that day. Cause I mean, everybody does, everybody trains hard, everybody's good, but it's not really important unless you can show up the day when it matters. So I think, you know, my freshman year, I learned a lot. I mean, I definitely jumped in and was like sort of seen as like the guy on my team. And I, you know, for a young kid, it's like hard to do that. Cause it's a lot of pressure. And I felt like freshman year was pretty, pretty stressful for me because I couldn't like meet the expectation and stuff like that. So sophomore year, I really like embraced my role and put even more of my like energy and commitment into it. And it started to pay off really well. You know, I started winning and stuff like that. I wasn't like in lane eight of the final because I remember that like my freshman year, I was in lane eight and I was like, damn, this really sucks being in lane eight. I have not been here in a while. So yeah, <laughs> huge strides with that and that was super cool and I finally felt like I was starting to figure it out and then the meet got canceled I'm like okay all right we'll get another shot later on and then summer trials got canceled I'm like okay all right so let's start over again and really just build every single meet and that's what I've been trying to do you know like that Texas meet with SMU that was good and it was good so I, I just hope I can just keep building and get to the point where I feel like I can't lose yeah and so you, you've had a few more racing opportunities, like you said. Um, take me to that that you had a dual meet with Texas uh, a little little couple weeks later, I think something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, totally. It's like same same teams, <laughs> same pool, but totally different environment. You guys are in in briefs, uh, mm -hmm. and so tell me about that and kind of what you know what's the goal there after coming off of trying to go you know pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, that one, it wasn't more so like times. It was just like, okay, like, let's just win. Um, and I just felt like I raced really well at that meet. You know, I went like 46-0 in backstroke, 142. Uh, and then I think my best swim was the 144 or 2 a.m. Like, I don't know what it was. I just felt like I felt like I was ready to go that day. That's why I'm saying like, I felt like my week, my meet a couple weeks ago, whenever I was suited, I didn't really like get to unlock that. Cause I didn't have like that edge. I, I was, I felt like super distracted. So that's why. So I thought that was a really good meet. I mean, they beat us, but I always, I love losing cause I like to learn from like those losses. I mean, I told everybody, I was like, Hey, we're good, but like, no, we're not that good. Like we need to keep going and stuff like that. And you know, our captains do a good job at telling the team that and keeping us focused too. Same thing with the coaches. So it's, it's always nice. It's a good reset whenever you lose to a team like that. Yeah. The, the you, you mentioned feeling distracted at the, at, at the first meet. Was there some, was there something particular distracting you that day or was you just didn't, didn't, you weren't in meet mode yet? I just don't think I was in meet mode. You know, like I had to go home for like family or uh, like a personal issue and stuff like that. And um, I don't know. I just felt like I couldn't get going until like, the last couple of days and I was like, okay, like I'm back. Let's, let's, let's focus. Gotcha. And so, so then a little later down the road, you have a, you have a dual meet with TCU mm -hmm. and uh, Jason texts me and says, 
check out the 200 fly. And I was like, okay, I'll, uh, like I pull up meat mobile, <laughs> look at the 200 fly, you know, I like take a sip of water and go, because <laughs> <laughs> you went 139.2 yeah. dual meat in the two fly. Tell, so tell me, tell me about that meat. Tell me about that. Yeah, race. That's definitely my best race this season. I don't know what I was on. I don't know what I was thinking. I just like, I just felt like insane. I literally felt insane. I just dove in. I was like, all right, we had weights. We had practice this morning. Like, let's just see how fast I can go. I go out like 46. I'm like, okay. Like, I didn't even know I was going out that fast. I just remember coming up the wall and I can hear like screaming. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? And then I go <laughs> and it starts getting hard. I'm like, oh, oh, finish, finish, finish. I come home and I touch the wall and everyone starts screaming. I'm like, oh, what did I do? Like 141, 140. I turn around, it's like 139.2. And I'm like, damn, okay. Damn, I should have shaved or something for this race because that was, that was insane. I really... I don't know. I really surprised myself with that race. That was a really fun race. That that kind of like sparked my love for butterfly again. I was like, oh, let's go. I really like butterfly now. I think that's that's one of the coolest parts. The coolest parts of your story is that it's like you do I am, but like you love all these events. Like you said, I want to do the 50. I want to do the 500. I mean, it's like there's no event that's kind of out of your range. Right. And that, I mean, that's what I'm I'm working for. I just don't. I want to be good at everything. So I'm just trying to figure it out. Uh, so at that meet, were you suited the whole time? Um, I think TCU. I'm pretty sure we were. Cause I, I remember I did the, yeah, we, I, yeah, we were. Um, it was the relay two fly. Then I turned around and did the 50. Cause Jason wanted to try like an experiment with like skins or whatever. And I did all I went like 21 and I was like, holy crap, I'm tired. Okay. Let's just like chill a little bit. I go take my suit off and relax. And then we do the 500 and it's me in Vegas. And we were trying to go like 414, but we ended up dying and go like 419, but it was still like a really fun race. Cause like that race is just like, it's a sprint, but it's a 500. So you're just like, how the hell am I supposed to do this? Cause I never do that race. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's, so why, why were you guys wearing suits for that meet in particular? Um, I think it was just give an opportunity for everyone to just go and see what they can do. Cause I mean, I think there was a lot of good swims there if I'm not mistaken, but mm -hmm. I mean, I, I used to have this mindset if you wear a suit or if you shave or even if you rest for a meet, like your season's over, like you'll never get faster, but like, that's not true. Like you, you'll get as fast as you want to get. So I like, I don't know. They give me a suit. I'm like, all right, I'm going for it then. <laughs> it's a good mindset to have. It seems like you're going to do all right as yeah, a professional, <laughs> yeah. but that whole nother conversation. Um, so then, so then Art Adamson, you have invite uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and again, you, you, t tell me about the preparation for that meet. Um, preparation, you know, just, killing it you know weights heavy weights killing yourself in practice stuff like that recover repeat for weeks and weeks and then you know a couple days of rest um i think this year we didn't do that much just because i think the plan is as of now to like fully rest for like the end of season meets just because you like similar to last year we don't want something just taken from us and not like taking the opportunity so i mean we had a couple days rest i think it was also like an experiment to like figure out like oh, who responds well to like this amount, this amount, whatever. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, invites invite, you know, like it's not like the biggest, but it is like a really good like progression checker. And I think like as a, as a whole, like the whole team, like, yeah, I swam well, but I feel like there was a lot of good swims, you know, like Tanner, like my boy Tanner went off. He went like 51, 300 breaths, 19, 350 free. You know, this, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Vegas, 410. There's a bunch of great swims at that meet. So I thought that was super sick. Our relays did decently well. I mean, it was just like, I rolled my ankle and I was in a boot. So like, I had to like not swim as much towards the end, but I thought that was a really good meet and it was super successful compared to like past invites because past invites, it was like, Oh, like one or two good swims. Like, Oh, that was good. That was it. But this one, I felt like every event, there was always something crazy going on, whether it was a freshman going to best time, you know, Vincent swam super well. I think he went like four best times, five best times, which is really good. Um, just stuff like that, little things like that. So that was. And so uh, when did you end up, when did you roll that ankle? Was it during the meet or before the meet? It was okay. So like 
it was hunter back finals and i was like getting hyped i was i was doing like jumping jacks high knees stuff like that like getting my blood going because it's like 10 minutes before my race and i wasn't going to jump in the water again to get warmed up so i'm doing all that and i'm wearing slides so i mean this is honestly like my fault like i should be like more cognizant of what i'm doing and stuff like that and be aware of my body so i'm just like doing jumping jacks and stuff like that and then i roll my ankle and it like kind of like wait hold on something and then it kind of like slips under me and i go damn i really just rolled my damn ankle okay and it's like hurting i'm like limping a little bit i'm like okay whatever like i'm just gonna go like i'll just pretend it didn't happen i go i swim the hunter back like it was pretty good like i felt it a little bit during the race stuff like that i get out of the water and i look down and there's literally like a ball on my ankle and i'm like damn i screwed up this time and then i go into the atr and there's like they're trying to do whatever they can all this stuff like lymph uh lymphosuction all this all this like fancy stuff and it's not getting better and i'm like okay like i i can't swim tonight and i have to tell jay like jay i'm off the relay i can't swim and he was i mean he was a little upset because it's like frustrating to have to deal with that but I don't know. And then I had to get a boot on. I had to go to some doctor really quick. And then I had to go to like get some therapy, like some like cryotherapy and stuff to do whatever I could. And I just, I swam prelims with like literally like, like a, a taped foot and I could not kick or push to save my life. And that's why I went 153 in prelims. <laughs> yeah. people, were, people were talking like, as if I like didn't try. And I was just like being I don't know, like rude or a bad sport on purpose. But I was like, no, dude, I literally couldn't move. And then at night they were like, okay, just take it off and go for it. And then I was like, okay. And then I went for it and it was, it was a good time. You know, I was upset because I was like, okay, like I really felt like I could have gone 135 that night. But I mean, the it was the odds are stacked against me and it's whatever, it's fine. Like I can't dwell on it. So I kind of moved past it and I, I learned from it. Just pay attention. You know? <laughs> don't be an idiot <laughs> it's, a, it's a good it's a good lesson it's a lesson learned the hard way but... i definitely will not be doing stuff like that ever again so yeah it's cool. <laughs> um so i mean you know that you go 43 87 in the 100 back you went 138 95 in the two i in that meet so yeah like you said it seems like you were on track for 135 but you know, next time. Uh, and, so, and then just when you thought, I don't know, just when I thought, just when I thought like, okay, we won't have like crazy fast swims for a little bit. There's this dual meet, <laughs> you and Incarnate Word uh, last weekend. Yeah. And uh, I mean, <laughs> we re- we did a write up on it. it. It sounded like kind of a crazy meet in yeah. terms of swims and non-swims it's tell me about this meet okay so we get to the meet and i'm i don't know i was kind of running late i was busy uh, i had to turn in my books so i didn't have to pay for them <laughs> if i if i missed the, the the checkout deadline so i go there and i'm rushing and all this stuff i get to the meet and i'm like just having a smoothie and then all of a sudden the fire alarm goes off and i'm like damn what's going on because it's gone up before it's just like like faulty i, I guess and we usually just like swim through it or like, don't, don't like pay attention to that. But then they're like, all right, we're leaving. Like the lifeguards are like escorting us out. And I'm like, damn, what is going on? Like, oh, we're really about to be here all day. So then we, we were outside waiting and I'm like, okay, this is weird, but whatever. I don't really care. And then we go back in after like, I think like 30 minutes or something. And we go back in. And I'm like, okay, like I'm running out of time. Let's go warm up. I jump in the water and then all of a sudden I'm just swimming and I see the entire incarnate word team walking out of the building i'm like what the hell is going on like what do we have a dual meet right now and then i I like get out and i'm like what's going on like our like coaches are kind of freaking out like some of the assistants are like dude what like and then we finally learned that two of their swimmers tested positive for covid and we were like dude no way so they're freaking out and then we're talking to all of us like have you talked to any of them all this stuff like figuring out like because of like contact tracing and we're like no 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 and then after I'm like, well, dude, I'm already like here. Like I've warmed up. Like, can we please just race? And they're like, yeah, we're just going to race like and just go for it. And I'm like, okay, sweet. And uh, the focus that day was the 100 I am because Jason was like, oh, yeah, the fastest time ever is like this. this, this. Like, it's like unofficial. It wouldn't really like, be anything crazy. But like if you get it, that's cool. And I was like, okay, sick. So I go and I, I mean, I warm up and I, I do the 50. I go like 19.7. 
Um, and then I finally go put my suit on. And then, I don't know, I kind of just put some music, I get in the groove and stuff like that, focus. And then I go and I race and I just feel like awesome. I'm just like, okay, sweet, nice. 15, 15 off the first wall, I fly, go out really fast. Backstroke feels super good. And brushstroke, even brushstroke felt really good. I was like, oh, let's go. Like, I wonder when we go, like 46 or something, 40, 47 now. And I go try to do like no breath and I like die and take a breath. And then I finally finish <laughs> and I look at the water. It was like, Woo! Like, yeah, yeah. And then I look, it's like 46, three. And I'm like, that's pretty good. Like, not bad. Okay. <laughs> not bad. I definitely feel like I got faster, but like, that was a fun race. I really feel like we need to normalize doing the hundred. I am like, why can we not do the hundred? I am. That's such a sick race. Definitely one of the most fun races to do. I think everyone's with you on that, except the powers that be <laughs> that decide what was, events we do. <laughs> that was fun, and I hope it was entertaining because I don't know if I'll be able to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was certainly, again, it was a crazy headline uh, to be like, wait, Incarnate Word, like they had COVID, uh, Shane Casa still went the fastest 100 I have ever, like what, what's happening? Uh, <laughs> but, but that was awesome. And I agree. I'm totally with you. We need the 100 I am. ISL gave it to us. Yeah. Already a massive success. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so you you got to you got to swim the hundred IM, you got to race that day. And so now what? Like you you have Christmas break, uh, you're gonna be training. It seems like you guys have gotten in a lot of racing. What have you I mean, we just talked through like four or five different meets. Uh what do you feel like you've gained just from this fall so far? Uh, I just, I have confidence finally. Like I was always, I've always been like a pretty confident guy in my ability. I'll say something and for the most part do it. But I feel like, I think regardless of like any factors, like, like training, how I, how I look and feel, how my swimming is going. Like I always can tell myself like now and like, believe it, like I'm going to swim fast. And it's like, I don't know. It feels really good. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like it would feel pretty good uh especially you know uh, from the outside looking in especially from these times you're dropping and you know wh where you say you're at it's, it seems like a good thing um so heading heading forward heading into you know 2021 um what are you what are you thinking about what are you looking forward to i guess just in the next couple of weeks couple of months uh i mean i guess the whole dynamics about to shift you know like trials is coming up and as of now it's gonna happen so that's just like something that has all my attention now i mean there's still like ncaa's and stuff but like it's a big show you know like ncaa's is here but like the trials and olympics is, is definitely my focus definitely uh do you guys do you do a fair amount of long course or at least do it weekly well, i mean up until like all of like the four maximum four in LA and stuff like that, we had been doing long course like three to four times a week. And it was like really fun and really interesting to do. Cause I felt like I was getting so good at swimming. Cause it, like you really get to lengthen out your stroke during long course, but we haven't lately, but I think they're really trying and pushing for it. But I also believe like don't need a swim long course to make it. Cause I, f I feel like there's plenty of swimmers that have definitely done that. So I'm not really worried. I just, I would love to, I, I do think that I need to race long course at least. I don't need to train it, but I need to race it. And that's yeah. why, I mean, I think me and my boy Vegas, we were talking to Jason and I think we're going to pro series next month, hopefully if they let us. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Nice. I would love to see you there. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and so um, were you at trials in 16? No, sadly I did miss it. Um, I think it was like 0.3 or 0.4 off in the hunter fly. So that's pretty rough because I was like, dang, I felt like I was doing so well and then I miss it. But I don't know. It's cool. I've, I've looked at pictures and videos, so I feel like almost the same thing. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll let the nerves and everything set it after the me. I, I, I have too much to focus on to let anything distract me. Yeah, I mean, I, I just asked because it is, I mean, that, that meets different, as I'm sure you've heard. And mm -hmm. I mean, have you talked to Jason and Jay about that part of it at all? Yeah, I mean, he says to, like, really, like, get this, like, picture and, like, this whole environment and really, like, visualize and just imagine it in every single way so you're, like, prepared, you know, like, I don't think I've ever been to a meet that has that many fans. I mean, 
I don't know how many are going to be there now because of like all the restrictions and stuff, but I still feel like it's going to be a good amount. And I don't know. I just like to think of it like I, I just close my eyes and just think of it like kind of like a mini basketball game, just a bunch of guys in, in speedos or in their suits racing. Uh, did, are you, are you a big basketball fan? Have you followed the NBA at all? Uh, I mean, it's super entertaining. I just, I watch it whenever like it's on in like the living room. I don't really pay attention to sports that much. I just like play video games all day. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, Shane, I appreciate you coming on. It's always great talking to you. Any parting thoughts before we sign off today? Uh, not really. My mind is blank right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's always super fun doing these. I love it. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.